Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Daniel James. And as always, if you're new here, welcome. Do you struggle with low self-confidence and low self-esteem? If you do, then stick with me as today, I'm going to deep dive into three reasons why you may be struggling and how we can unpick them. For me, when it comes to self-confidence, it's first of all, looking at it and making sure we're not using that term as a blanket statement for everything. I was working with a client recently and he said, oh, I've got real low self-confidence. And when we unpicked it, we realized that he wasn't struggling with low self-confidence. He was struggling in low self-confidence in one particular area. We realized that in other areas of his life, he was very, very confident. But this one area, he lacked the self-confidence. And what he'd done is he'd then use his big brush to be like, oh, I just struggle with confidence in everything. Are you doing the same? Do you say, oh, I've got no self-confidence, no self-esteem, but Actually, it's only one certain aspect or area that you struggle with confidence and self-esteem, but you take a step back and look at the bigger picture and actually you're quite confident in other areas. Now, let's dive into the, the three reasons why you may be struggling and how we can unpack them a little bit. So the first reason why you may be struggling with low self-esteem uh, and self-confidence comes back to past experiences. We don't tend to like to look back in the past. I know that I certainly don't. But we need to look back there to see what things may have happened in our childhood, in our past relationships, or specific life challenges that may have led to a struggling with self-confidence. Childhood, for example, what the, were the things that were said from your parents that made you feel like you were maybe not good enough, that maybe you compared to a sibling or another relative? We constantly told you were a naughty child, that you were no good or that you weren't pretty enough, whatever this may be. Or it could have been the sports team. Maybe you were picked last or the coach has something to you negatively. Or maybe at school, like you weren't academic. But then what you've done is because you weren't academic in school, you basically tarnish yourself with stupid. And now you don't have any confidence because you think that you're stupid. So now as this adult, you've got this little child voice in your head being like, oh, like you just remember that you're stupid. It's so important that we take a step back to sometimes realize how impactful these early years can be. So if you're long-term listening to the podcast, you'd have heard me talk about this before, but from the ages of zero and seven, this is our mind. As an adult, we have this sort of conscious part of our brain, but uh, uh, this conscious brain where we can critically think. So we've got the conscious here, and then we've got the subconscious at the bottom. However, from a young age, from zero to seven, we don't have this conscious ability to critically think. So it's like a sponge. So all this information goes in, goes in, goes in, and we are essentially programmed. This program then leads to us acting and, and behaving in a certain way. And th this programming is completely subconscious. It's, it's automatic. We don't think about it. So if you had all these negative influences, like negative, 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 about um, how smart we are, how intelligent we are, how good looking we are, blah, 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 that's then going to translate into our adult life as low confidence and low self-esteem. It can also be that we're constantly seeking external validation. Maybe when we were younger, we were constantly getting reassurance and praise externally, and we never learned the ability to give ourselves praise. So something again, if you're a parent, I always say that if someone, a child comes to you and says, oh, what do you think of this picture or whatever that thing is, just throw it back to them and say, well, what do you think? Because if they're coming to you and say, what do you think of this? They're basically saying, I don't know what to think, tell me what to think and then then it can lead to them being people pleasers and etc etc et that's another podcast that we'll dive into at some point how about past relationships maybe had a, a bad ex-boyfriend ex, ex-girlfriend okay could even be a bad relationship with a boss where you're constantly told you weren't good enough that you weren't smart enough that you're never going to achieve anything stay in your box don't go above your station all of these things will impact you when it comes to having that low confidence and low self-esteem but we need to become aware once we become aware of these things, we can then do something about it. But it's important to realize that these experiences, they influence us and they may have had a massive influence on us. Here's the important part. They don't define our worth or our potential. They do not define our worth or our potential. So the first thing is, just maybe just get pen and paper and just think back to times in your life where um, you, you feel like that, that low self-confidence, that low self-esteem, that low self-worth maybe kicked in. Just write a few things down again. Could be from school, uh, could be from past relationships, whether that's romantically or friendships or even work relationships or any sort of life challenges that you've experienced that may have knocked your confidence a little bit. Write those down because once we gain awareness of them, we can then do something about it. 
Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, please smash that thumbs up button. It helps with YouTube algorithm to get the video out there to help more people that may need to hear this message. If you don't want to miss any future episodes, hit that subscription button. And now back to the episode. Now, the second thing we need to unpick here is this negative self-talk. A lot of the time we're struggling with low self-confidence, low self-esteem. It's like that death by a thousand paper cuts. So this thing in the past that we've just identified, yes, it's happened. It may have happened once. Maybe in the playground, a child said something to you. And then what you've done is then you've repeated it over and over and over and over again. It's that death by a thousand paper cuts. And then we wonder why we're walking around with low self-confidence, low self-esteem. Because we're essentially bullying ourselves. And maybe a parent said something in passing. And that's the key thing with the first point. Just because someone said or did something doesn't mean that was the intended outcome. That may not have been their intention. They may have said something, and especially from a young age, we can massively misinterpret or take on this information and basically internalize it. And we've just repeated it, but the thing we've repeated isn't correct. I share the story of something happened to me with an ex-girlfriend, and I basically shared this story so many times, and I made myself the victim, and this happened, this happened, this happened. And I was a guest on a podcast, and... When I was actually talking about it for the first time with this new sense of awareness, I realized that I'd made up a story and that these, these three factual things that happened, but all the rest of it was a story that I'd made up in my head. How many stories have you made up in your head and repeated them over and over and over again about your self-worth, about your confidence, about the value that you bring? It's important to realize this and start to challenge that self-talk because low self-esteem comes from low self-talk, poor self-talk constantly getting inside of our own head. We're constantly battering ourselves down and down again. And then asking, is this thought based on fact or feeling? Is this a fact? Or am I just making up a story? Because if we're lacking self-confidence, it's very easy to construct a story that fits that narrative, but there'll be no fact. So I always say, what are the facts? And this comes when it comes to challenges in your life as well. We make up stories about these challenges. What are the facts? Get the facts. Or don't just go on feelings. Is there any evidence to back this up, what I'm thinking? Because a lot of the time we'll use one experience and that's it. We disregard all the rest of the stuff, just like the client that I mentioned at the start. Lacked self-confidence in one area, but made up a story that he lacked it in all other areas. There's no evidence to support it. Start to question it. The more we start to question these thoughts, the, the, the more they lose their power over them. And when it comes to self-talk, ask yourself, would you talk to a friend how you talk to yourself? Because isn't, isn't it funny that we would never let someone talk to us the way that we talk to ourselves? If someone started to talk to us how we talk to ourselves, we'd be like, whoa, hold on a minute. Yet we let ourselves talk to ourselves that way. Start to be kinder to yourself. Just notice that self-talk and start to question it a little bit. The more you question it, the more you hit that voice with facts, the more it loses its grip. And final thing here when it comes to uh, unpacking the reasons why we're struggling with our self-confidence, self-esteem is... Identifying our external influences. What are you filling your mind with? What are you concentrating on every single day? Is it constantly being bombarded with social media and you're just seeing fitness models, influencers, all these people bombarding, bombarding, bombarding? Does any of them wonder why you're struggling with self-confidence, self-esteem when you're comparing yourself to, again, these celebrities, these supermodels? It's not real life. It's very heavily in uh, filtered. We know this. It's edited. And we can be waking up feeling absolutely amazing. And maybe at work we've had a promotion and we've had a pay rise and we go on social media and realise there's a 16-year-old millionaire. And straight away, we lose that confidence again. We lose that steam in ourselves. Or we're having a great day and, oh, you know, you're about to go on holiday with the kids and, you know, you just, just go in somewhere in the country that you live and you, you go on and you see that your brother or sister's taking their kids away to somewhere abroad. And then straight away, low confidence, low self-esteem, like the comparison game. Is that saying that comparison is a thief of joy? And I agree with that to an extent. If you're comparing yourself to someone in a positive way for inspiration and growth, I don't see it as a problem. But I guarantee that if you're struggling with low self-confidence and low self-esteem, that you're comparing yourself in a negative way. Stop it. Other people's journey is their journey. Your journey is your journey. Is there any of the social pressures that are put on you? Just start to question and ask, what are you focusing on? Because if you're focusing on all this negative stuff, all this pressure, is it any wonder why we're struggling with self-esteem and self-confidence? So to recap, the three things we need to unpack and unpack as to find out the reasons why we're struggling with low self-confidence and self-esteem is we need to reflect on the past. 
where have they actually come from? Number two, start to challenge this negative self-talk that's been created from there. And number three, identify external influences that impact you every single day. Realize that just because you're struggling with self-confidence in one area does not mean you struggle with it throughout. And remember that, as you said in the very first thing here, these experiences, they influence us, but they don't define your worth or your potential. Taking any value from today's episode, don't forget to like and share with a friend. Until next time, take it easy.